know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community? All right, peace family. Um, it's so good to be with you guys today. Um, we're gonna just, you know, wait a couple of seconds to get um, people in the room. We have a, a very exciting, outstanding, um, honorable judge tonight, our first judge on the show. So we were, I'm so excited to sit down and, um, and talk with, um, with Judge Joe Brown. This is, this is gonna be good, guys. Um, so just before we get started, I, I just wanna first say shout out to Detroit, Michigan. It was the first stop on our Hoppy Tour and you guys showed up and showed out and that's what's up, all right? There is, um, if, for, you, for, for you guys that don't know, um, so Happy Talks, you know, we have this Happy Talk series, but we also have a full length documentary that's like two hours and 12 minutes long. And uh, we started the tour this past um, Sunday in Detroit, Michigan. We were supposed to actually start our tour last year in April of 2020, but of course um, the pandemic uh, started and uh, you know, we were trying to scramble and figure out what we were gonna do. So in the meantime, while we were, you know, cause we didn't wanna lose our audience, we decided to start interviewing people from the film. There's 30 scholars in this documentary. And so one by one, we're bringing them in every week. But then it, it just, Happy Talks has kind of took off to this other like uh, stratosphere in terms of us just really opening um, our reach and, and getting a lot of like uh, really um, profound um, scholars and historians, um, you know, onto the show. Anybody that is trying to push the race forward. So we have been um, very lucky to have um, guest after guest come on and share their wisdom with us. And so finally, we were able to, you know, get back into the um, the seats. And so we started this uh, city tour. We're going to be in six different cities. So Detroit, you know, shout out to Detroit. That was this past weekend. Our next stop is Atlanta. So we will be in Atlanta on October 23rd at the uh, Riverton, um, excuse me, Rivertown Epicenter, which is black owned, uh, you know, conference hall. So it's gonna be great. And then um, right when we're done with Atlanta, we're gonna move to Philadelphia on October 30th. Then we're in Houston on November 6th, 12th, uh, December 5th, we will be with Anthony Browder in uh, Washington, DC. And then we will close up um, at, uh, in Connecticut, Bridgeport, on December 18th. We're still trying to fit in a couple of places, so we'll definitely keep you, you know, abreast of the situation. And that's why it's super duper important that if you're not following us on our Twitter, uh, you know, Facebook, YouTube um, channel, you are missing out in our IG because we put all of our business out there. And if you are following, it, following us, you'll be the first to know what's going on. Um, so please make sure that you guys are, um, you know, uh, following us on those platforms. Please like this video and, um, and make sure that you send it to at least three other people. Okay. So that we can get the word out about Hoppy and all the things that we're doing over here. And so, um, before we go on, I just want to give some shout outs. Um, uh, these are shout outs that, you know, these are people who helped were very instrumental in helping us in Detroit to get Detroit off the ground. So we want to first just thank Michael Imhotep. He did a great job with hosting, um, with having us on his platform prior. So thank you, Michael Imhotep. Nubia Warford, um, she was really um, uh, essential in helping us put together the panel. And let me thank the panel. We had um, Chef Neza Bendeli, uh, Malik Yakini, Demetrius Hutcherson, and Dr. Ken Harris. And trust me, we will not hear the end of, um, you know, uh, you will you will hear more about these um, panelists because they were awesome. Um, also, I want to thank Dennis Boatwright. So not only did we meet Dennis in July, um, he came to our booth at the African Street Festival. He, you know, he was like, I'm down. I'm writing this book about John Henry Clark. He knew, you know, he's just been, you know, uh, we've been communicating. 
over the last couple of months, but we had a special guest come through, which was Dr. Leonard Jeffries. Mr. Dr. Leonard Jeffries, 85 year old self came through. He got on a plane on Sunday morning and he was part of that panel in the evening. So I want to thank a special shout out to Dr. Uh, Leonard Jeffries and a, and a special shout out to Dennis for going to pick him up and making sure he was okay. Um, Queen Nandy, we did a, a little slight, um, like 22 minute version um, of the film at her um, Knowledge Cafe. So thank you, Queen Nandy, for opening up your um, spot for that. And um, and Charles, uh, um, and Charles, I want to mess up his name, his last name. It's a Zucchio. Zucchio, but anybody that knows anybody knows Charles. Charles has been around for a long time, but he's been um, helping us coordinate uh, Dr. Jeffries and just, you know, making sure that, you know, everyone got to where they need to be. So thank you, Charles. Um, so next order of business, we are going to Africa in February. We're going to, to Kemet. We're taking a pilgrimage, whatever you want to call it. You need to be in the place. We are doing a two day conference in uh, Aswan, Egypt. All the tickets have sold out. We have a few seats left. And the uh, trip will start on February 20th through the 28th. Okay. And that includes, you know, includes everything your hotel, your flight, everything. Um, and it also, in, you know, gets you into the conference for free. Now, in this conference, we are so excited to add. Um, Dr. Baina Bello, she is the latest presenter that has agreed to present in Aswan, Egypt. So um, along with her, we have Anthony Browder, Dr. Wade Nobles, uh, Professor James Small, Asar Imhotep, Dr. Solange Ashby, um, Dr. Rosalind Jeffries, and Dr. Leonard Jeffries, and uh, Infudishi Juhutimis will all be in the house. So if I were you, okay, it's, it's, and I, I never, I like, I hate to use, I hate when people are talking about money and they're like, oh, it's only, or it's just this, you know, um, I'm not going to use either one of those words. This is something you need to commit in doing. It will be $300 to, um, to actually secure your seat. That's a deposit. And you have until January 18th to come up with the rest of the money. And there's lots of ways, you know, legal ways <laughs> that you can, you know, try to get this money together. It, it's going to be a trip of the lifetime to have all these elders in one place. Um, you know, we don't know when, when we'll be, you know, we'll ever be back then with everybody again. So it's very important that if you can take um, part of it that, you know, that you do. Um, okay. So that's all my news. And I will, um, you know, um, uh, give some shout outs to everyone in the house, um, you know, later on, but I do want to say at the end when um, Dr. Um, and he is a doctor, Dr. Judge Joe Brown, <laughs> when he's, uh, when he's finished, we are going to have, uh, we're going to talk about Dr. Patricia Newton, the late Dr. Patricia Newton at the end of the show. So please, um, you know, make sure you stay tuned. Like I said, please share and like this video. Okay. Um, because this is going to be exciting. All right. So without further ado, okay, I'm going to introduce you to Judge Joe Brown. Yay! Well, well looks <laughs> like up, the Judge judge is, looks like the judge is in the house. Good evening. The judge is in the house. The judge is in the happy house. That's what's up. All okay. right, Miss Felicia. <laughs> yes. Okay, this is so exciting because you know I um I've been watching I've been watching you for years and you know my my family you know I was telling my mom you know I she doesn't always watch me on this but when I saw her because I'm from Detroit and I saw her this past weekend and I was mm -hmm. like hey, so look we have a Judge Joe Brown come on the show she's like oh what what, what what so I had to send her the information you know so it's cool that she'll be um tuning in so what's up mom um all right. So we're just going to get in it because you are, you have, um, a lot of interesting and, um, and informative opinions about stuff. Um, you've been a judge for a very long time, so we really value your opinion. All right. Um, <laughs> okay. So, all right, we're going to start with, um, and you know what, before I do anything, I should probably perhaps put my glasses on. Because if not, I won't be able to. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the time, dear. Yes. Okay. Wow. Look at that. Okay. 
So there seems to be a lot of um, misinformation circulating regarding what should be done um, or what are our rights in terms of a traffic stop, okay? So are we required to present identific identification when asked by a police officer? Yes. If you're operating a motor vehicle, you have to show that you are licensed to exercise the privilege, not the right, to drive a motor vehicle on public streets, thoroughfares, boulevards, highways, expressways, roadways, alleys, thoroughfares, and public parking lots. Okay. And All right. what you get if you get a ticket is a citation in lieu of arrest. If you don't sign that thing, you're going to get arrested and taken down down. Now, the signing of a ticket is not a confession to guilt. It's just an acknowledgement that you are promising to appear. It is essentially an abbreviated form of release on your own recognizance. Okay. Okay. All right, because it seems to be this thing that I see a lot of mine where people are like, you know, if you get stopped, you don't have to do it. And this why is would they think that? You should have learned that in the fifth grade. Maybe you weren't paying attention in elementary school. Maybe the elementary school you attended was a deficient one. I know a lot of them are now. <laughs> yeah, I got to agree with you on that. Absolutely. Maybe somebody should have told you at home. Uh, as part of your home training about how to get along in your world. Mm. Absolutely. Yes, you're operating a motor vehicle and you're asked for your license, registration, and proof of insurance. If that's what your state requires, you need to produce it. Okay. So, um, so, so does the police have the right to search your vehicle um, if you Depends don't upon the circumstances and what he's stopping you for and what he has discovered okay. search incident to arrest yes if there's certain other indicia that something is about to be absconded with vehicles are mobile so there are special rules that apply to motor vehicles that do not apply to homes okay it depends I would suggest that you go read up on it. You're in this ball game. You're playing the, uh, the sport. You might as well learn the rules. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the. Um, I think we're going to keep hearing that theme throughout our conversation about doing your research and you know knowing knowing what's what before you start acting out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Okay, yeah, you answer my name. When you're out there, unless you're willing to play kamikaze, don't try to rack a check your ass can't cash. That's also a good rule. Yes. God, you know, my father used to say that all the time. And it wasn't until I became an adult where I actually understood what he meant. Because <laughs> I used to See, one of the things we have a problem with is our relationship with police. Yes, it's pretty bad, but there's another reason why it is as bad as it is. See, it is the responsibility of a community to instill and enforce public peace, dignity, and order. The police are just there to help out, but in the black communities around the country, not all of them, but too many of them, there's no public peace, dignity, and order there's no home training. There's a last uh, lack of masculinity wherein men are supposed to impose public peace, dignity, and order. So the police come in and they've got to do the whole thing and they don't live there for the most part. So they look at it as containment of some wild animals who act in an unruly fashion so it doesn't spill over into where they live. Mm -hmm. But it's our responsibility to maintain dignity, honor, and meet our obligations to do so. But you see, for 50 years, we have been fed entertainments and music and also other things that have glorified dysfunction. So instead of the orderly, hardworking man and woman in a family, we've got pimps, hoes, drug dealers, thieves, mm. gangbangers, murderers, robbers, and everything else that we ideate upon being. We ideate upon being in the NFL, NBA, MLB, and we don't do anything about the real world. We've got Cardi B and 
Lizzo the lizard li hippo uh, running around playing slut is a bad example for young children. Now, I'm in my early mid 70s and I distinctly remember what I was seeing on television and in the movies and heard at school and to an extent musically when I was six, seven, eight, nine years old, 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And I can just imagine what kind of poison is going to be in the minds of some of the people that are around now who are going to be my age when they get there, if they live that long. And that's rather sickening. If you yeah. remember the wardrobe malfunction with Janet Jackson, a pretty young lady. Well, they went and raised hell about that, but they get fat, overweight, out of shape, unattracted, Lizzo, lizard, hippo with her bare, greased down ass and some dental floss up between her fat hippo butt cheeks twerking on the floor of the Staples Center at a Lakers game. And that's supposed to be held up as an exemplar of what it's all about. And we are not supposed to shame. Well, guess what? Shame is a good thing. It keeps humans acting well. When you are shamed by what you contemplate reflecting upon what you've done that has an exemplary effect on getting your future behavior to comply what is with what is necessary to your community's peace dignity and order yeah 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 i don't think we yeah we i don't think we effectively use shame anymore mm -mm. no he embarrassed the hell out of folks and besides they got these little sissy boys running around their feelings get hurt. When I was in junior high, high school, elementary school, we used to amuse ourselves during uh, recess, uh, lunch, and we'd run the dozens. Hey, man, I don't want to say nothing, man. When I was over at your house last night, don't tell your daddy, man. I was trying to get you a new baby brother on the way, man, you know? Hey, man, I don't want to say nothing about your mama, man, but you know, between me and you, your mama's so fat, man, she can't even fit in a bathtub but with two drops of water. That's why she stinks so bad, man. Yep. <laughs> you talk yeah. about my mama. Oh, man, what's wrong with you? These days, yeah. mama's likely to fit along with the run in the dozens you know she likely to be fat can't get in a bathtub and doesn't take a bath and stinks and by the way that lizard hippo is talking about she doesn't even use deodorant anymore damn really yeah she's bragging about it that's got to be some funky foul crap put your clothes on lady and act like you got a decent personality and some decency about you Think of the impact you're having on all of the little girls. I got a personal problem with that hippo. Uh, a good friend of mine wanted me to talk to her 11-year-old granddaughter. She said she was over here, and I had to stop her. I found she'd eaten a whole half a loaf of white bread and was still going at it. So what's the matter, baby? She says, I want to be beautiful. I said, what? She said, I want to be fat like Lizzo. Yeah. And now they got the boys looking at these freaks that still has got swinging appendages between their legs dressed up in dresses and gowns. Yeah. See, this is by some people that 50 some years ago, 55 years ago, started getting together because you had the lesbian crew that hated men the feminist crew that hated it they weren't men the beta soy boy type the nerds and they hated that they couldn't be men and you had the gay boys that hated that they didn't want to be men and then you got the anti-war crowd that said war is a man thing so to stop war change the way boys are raised to men raise them like girls so they become emotional so they cry and shout or let it all hang out instead of being uptight and under self-control and now it didn't stop war obviously and we have some of the feminist types want to be in the frontline units mm. it's just emasculated the society which is taking away that element of control 
see, we have the estrogen feminine component out there. We've got to reinstate the masculine testosterone component because you see it impacts boys and girls. It's a yeah. influence to think clearly, logically, rationally, reasonably, analytically, critically, et cetera, et cetera, to explore, to see what's out there, to research, to check it out. But all you've got is emote, 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 cry, show your emotions. Everybody talks about love and sometimes it's damn love is take care of business. Mm. Love yeah. don't buy you a damn thing. It's nice, it's wondrous, it's glorious, it's painful, but sometimes it hurts so good, sometimes it feels good. But the bottom line is, one thing about love, you need to remember one of you is going to die one day, even if both of you stay together for life, so one of you is going to be hurt bad. So it's a give and take thing, mm. like having a dog. Dogs give you unconditional love. You love your dog, but your dog doesn't live too long and they die and they break your heart. So, I mean, it's what it is. Yeah. Let's get down to taking care of the business, TCB. Do what you're supposed to do. Take care of your obligations, responsibilities, etc. Be accountable. Be brave and courageous, which gets us to your other topic, C-19, COVID-19, sars cov dash two known through the disease it produces as COVID-19, a new variant Delta, and there are two more on the horizon too. Well, I have a sneaking suspicion that a lot of the people that are anti-vaxxers were just a little scared sissy type that when I was coming up would be hollering and screaming when the school nurse brought out the hypodermic to give them a shot. Mm. See, you have a generations of people around they understand about the greater good. We got drafted. They stopped that back in the 70s. But you could be drafted if you were in good health and you didn't have a conscientious objective status because of some beliefs that were deemed real, generally religious. And what happened was, is you owed an obligation to protect your country. Now, I know folk have this problem with America, and it's just white supremacy is the cause of everything, which it's not. It's a big problem and has been. But we have had the means to do something about it, but we've punked out over the last 50-some years and haven't done what we ought to do about it. And we've become our own worst enemy. But just imagine, if you could, if there was a black country and you were being called upon to defend it. Well, in the process of defending your country, an all black country, hypothetically, uh, you might die in the process. Well, the same thing about treating folk uh, medically for some of the conditions they might encounter when you try to protect the whole population, there's always collateral damage. Some people die, that's usually acceptable because what you have is some little alien things that are invisible that cannot reproduce but need to take over a host body that's us so they can replicate now a lot of people have died in the world and it's not a white thing it's not a weapons lab thing it is a worldwide thing that impacts all of humanity and what some people don't get because they didn't take pay attention to or get taught science in elementary junior high and high school let alone take it in college is that some species have gone totally extinct because of diseases that's what they think and there's a lot of support for that so this thing may get beyond us, and it's not so much whether you are a knucklehead and you want to go through COVID-19, which from talking to many people I know personally who have survived it, it is an awful and painful thing for the most part. Mm. And there are a whole lot of people, yes, who have compromised systems, but they were still our loving grandparents, parents, brothers and sisters, co-workers, neighbors, and friends. Yeah. 
And you got to get off of this selfish bullshit and understand you owe something to other people. It's like when you cough, you cover your mouth unless you are a pig. You sneeze, you do the same thing. See, you look anywhere in the world in the last few years and you see films, you see people with masks on. They've got a cold, but they've got to go out in public. With us, you know, somebody in the office has a cold. They come to the office because they won't stay home. And by the end of the week, everybody in the damn office has got snot-filled Kleenex filling up their wastebasket. That's just selfishness on our part. Don't be scared. Be brave. And no, nobody can tell you what it's all about because, damn it, nobody knows. It's brand new. It's a beta coronavirus. We've suffered for four of them for as long as I've been around. They cause the common cold. And there are three more of them. One, two, three. SARS-CoV-1 that caused severe acute respiratory syndrome, SARS-CoV-1A that caused MERS, which is Middle Eastern uh, Respiratory Syndrome, and SARS-CoV-2, which causes COVID-19. Okay. And now we've got the Delta variant. And I wrote people that have caught COVID, suffered from COVID, and caught it again. And I know people who've got the Delta variant, survived, and they tell me how horrible that was, and they went and out and got a, the vaccination protocol. I know I've had uh, a booster, so I've had three of those shots. But you see, I'm from a generation where you didn't go to school without a smallpox inoculation. Everybody fought to get in line to get not the sugar cube with the little pink spot on it, but the shot when they had the first shots for polio. And I know that you had to have your vaccination card or you didn't go to school. I know if somebody drafted you or you signed up for ROTC or anything like that, or certain jobs, you had to go through a line and there was a nurse or a doctor on each side and you got maybe 10, 12 shots at a time. Mm. Diphtheria, typhus, typhoid, uh make sure you still had immunity to smallpox mumps measles and all that when i grew up they didn't have vaccinations for measles or rubella and every time we had a measles outbreak we would have a memorial service two or three weeks after it died down because several of the students would have died people died from that in upstate new york three some years ago Four years ago, they had a measles outbreak and 42 people died. So it's nothing to laugh at. Folk go around just, they have their, they haven't put in their heads what they need to about science. And then the other thing is, so what if it came out of a weapons lab? Anybody ever check out Frankenstein? Frankenstein was not the monster, that was the doctor. And once that monster escaped from the lab, it had a mind of its own. So we got little alien things going around that we have to put in check. We may never get them in check. Hopefully we will. But this may be a thing where you need a vaccination every year or every few months. We don't know yet. And we don't pay enough money out to the people who do the research. Several Mm -hmm. years ago, I just on a lark, I went and looked up five of the top epidemiologists in the country. Those are people who deal with epidemics. I looked at what they got paid and what their research budgets were, and we play people, we pay people who distract us and play basketball more than the five of them got all together. Wow. So what does that say? We don't have anybody in the White House with the sense to do what Roosevelt did when they wanted an atomic bomb put together a Manhattan Project. These bozos don't have sense enough because they're just as ignorant as some of the people they represent. They didn't take science or anything else in school, and they aren't the brightest bulbs in the room. So you're getting on Fauci. Fauci doesn't know because nobody knows. And the way science works is some of these bright kids did Uh, some of us didn't want to pay attention to because we thought they were nerds. 
uh, they wear the lab coats, and one morning at 4.17 a.m., they go slap themselves on the head when they sit bolt upright in the bed, bed and say, that may be it. And they rush down to the lab to see if it is. Mm. So you just can't buy this stuff. You need a lot of resources, which cost money. But it's these smart people have to figure it out. It's like figuring out a puzzle. Yeah. Like doing a paper or homework. Yeah. So, um, God, you know, I asked you one question and you, it's like you're encompassing like 10 of my questions. All right. So we just, I just have to go back to um, just one, one of the things that you see, uh, well, a lot, a few of the things, but so, you know, when you're talking about, you know, people getting vaccinated and I'm looking in the chat and some people are like, you know, I'm not getting the jab. I'm going to get the jab, this, this, and that. Can you, um, what do you say to people who feel like, um, as black folks, that we feel that we're always kind of like the, the people who- Stop being so damn superstitious and scary. One of the reasons black folk are still subject to white supremacy is we are cowards. Oh. Oh. Well, there are too many black folk walking around today. There ought to be far fewer of us because more of our ancestors ought to have died slitting some white throats in the middle of the night on a plantation, but we're too scared. We all want to live. So you can't be free unless you're willing to die for it. Mm, so we wait, say die. It again. Say it again. Say it again. We Jester. die, but we're not being brave. We're being suicidal. Mm. Yo, man, what you looking at, man? Hey, man, you in the blue. I'm talking to you, man. What you looking at? Man, I ain't looking at nothing. You call me a lie, man? See, the fool that is starting this hates himself, but he doesn't have the nerve to put the pistol to his own head and pop the cap. He's going to try to provoke one of his community members of doing him the favor of taking him out. That's what that drive-by crap is. See, if they weren't big punks like they were for the drive-by, they'd go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, man to man, and punch it out. But these mm. punks are scared to get a bruise on their faces. They think they're too pretty. And they have too much of their bitch mamas in them. Not good women, but bitch mamas who had them at 13, 14 and kept having them. Some to get checked, some to get advantage, some for reasons they don't know. They hated men to begin with and they put that self, that hatred into the boy and it became self-hate. So he actualizes the self-hate because he has no purpose. I've heard this so many damn times. Yo, Judge, I'm 22. I ain't going to see 24. You know, I ain't got no daylight at the tan end of my tunnel. Well, so damn what? That's a privilege. That means you've got nothing to lose by doing what you were supposed to do and fight your way through the smoke and flames in that tunnel and get the people you ought to be responsible for so they can get to the point of getting to the end of the tunnel, even if you don't, at least you'll be a hero taking care of slaying the fire-breathing Gila monsters that are setting fire to that tunnel. But we don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, old drug ODs, that ain't nothing but a form of socially acceptable suicide. Oh, my God. Did you hear about poor Alan last week? No, what happened? Thomas alluded to that. It was so horrible. You know, he was talking about life had no purpose. Yes, I remember. Oh my God, what are you trying to say? Oh, he just couldn't take it. He jumped out of the 14th floor of his father's office building. Oh no. What we do is, yay, man, you hear about stomp, man? No, nah, man, what happened? We was all over Shaw Dogs, man. And we was hitting that glass dick, man. It was some fire smoke, man. And all of a sudden, dude all down on the ground, man. Foam coming out of his mouth. His heels was kicking, man. Eyes done rolled up in the top of his head, man. As soon as we cleaned that shit up, man, we called 911, but it was too late, man. Buzz his heart out before he, they could get him to the emergency room. Man, that's some cold-blooded shit, man. I hope his mama don't freak. Ain't that the second one she done lost this year? That's suicide. It's called yeah. your sorry ass 
didn't pay attention kindergarten through law uh, through high school. Uh, that's because your sorry mama had too much to do besides be a mama and teach you what she ought to have done, or she didn't teach you the hard nosed things you needed to know to be a man. See, being a man is like being steel. You just can't get iron because iron is brittle or it's soft. And you got to sit there and you alloy it and you forge it and you pound it and you shape it and you temper it, you anneal it, you temper it, you quench it. You got to work it so it's tough. Our young men are not tough. What do you think? But do you think that women can um, can raise men or do you think no, men can raise men? They can't. They can inspire the boy to pay attention to what's going on around him to be a man. But the problem is, is unlike even 30 years ago where the system and society was pushing manhood, now it's pushing sissyhood from mm. these people that hate what they are, hate what they want to be, and detest and despise masculinity. They want us to destroy manhood, womanhood, and childhood. And one of the worst bunch of sleazy ass scoundrels is this BLM crowd. It doesn't stand for Black Lives Matter. That stands for Black Lesbian Mania. Their mantra before some of us jumped them bad enough that they took it down was they were for the destruction of the traditional nuclear family, the ending of cisgender privilege. And cisgender is just a uh, German slang for straight folk. Mm. See, a queer affirming network. Uh, they took some passages out of the uh, pedophile uh, mantra that they had for NAMBLA, North American Man Boy Love Association. I mean, it's some sick shit. And see, the other thing is, is we don't have people dedicated to helping their own people out. We got a lot of folk that pimp it. Mm, yes. For the movement. And that ranged from pimp preachers in a pulpit to pimp ass folk masquerading as black scholars who don't have a damn solution, don't have a damn proposal. They just rehash how miserable it's been for black folk in the past. Hell, if you were 21 and you don't know how miserable it was for black folk in the past, you're a pretty sorry son of a bitch. So get motivated to do something about it. Prepare yourself so you will have the skill set, the knowledge, and the ability to think critically and analytically so you can develop courage and bravery and get a skill set that enables you to be somebody that can walk through the valley in the shadow of death and don't give a fuck because you're one of the bad motherfuckers in the valley. Mm. So, you know, I'm just... Judge Joe Brown, okay, I'm just thinking about kids, right? Like kids right now that are in school. Right now they're talking about this critical race theory. They're talking about taking Critical race theory is bullshit. Let me tell you about it. They got a woman at my alma mater, UCLA, her name is Crenshaw. A former roommate of mine just a couple of months ago said, Joe, let me send you something. And I said, yeah, I recognize you, man. Where'd you get that copy? We did that in 1967 to set up the Black Studies program out there at UCLA. I said, now nah, I'm going to send you this critical race theory. What do you see? I got back with him a couple of hours later. Somebody is goddamn near identical. Somebody just copped something from 50 plus years ago and is trying to turn it into something new. It's an academic hustle where mm. you take an old idea, you rebrand it. And then the other damn problem is, is that what it says in critical race theory is there's no real race problem. Yes, there's a race problem. And some of the worst race problems you will ever find in the United States of America are reflected on the silver screen and on the small screen. Mm. Because there's a joke, those of us who grew up in Los Angeles, California, like I did have, which is you'll never find a white boy in L.A. that'll admit there's a damn thing a black man knows he doesn't know better unless maybe it's basketball. <gasps> and you get this poison put in your head because Hollywood, eight or nine out of every ten people employed in that sick industry, they are. Mm. They suck dick and got dicks. They eat pussy and got pussy. Or they got freak and they like little kids. 
and they hate straight men worst of all hate black straight men worse than anything on the earth because they don't understand them and we're very threatening so for 50 plus years they've been putting out propagandistic poison to take us out and they use black people as guinea pigs in america because they do it to us they get everybody used to the concept and then they spread it and then it's kind of like what do we do about it we run around hip-hop and that's dead too hip-hop's been stagnant for 30 plus years yeah when he gonna come up with some new music yeah well, there's something it's just boring. You listen to it, you can't tell whether it's two weeks old, two months, two years, 20 years. Yeah. And they be the sample stuff. Somebody was playing, some kid was, I said, well, what is that? I said, you sampling? I said, yeah. That's, I said, that shit was, I wrote that back in 1958. Yeah. What the hell is wrong with you? That shit's 61 years old. And you talking about is heavyweight? Go in a restaurant and they're playing music that you used to have to find a radio station to listen to or buy a 45 uh, record. Now is elevator and restaurant music. Yeah. Um you know, okay, this is a, a perfect little just break for a second. So what Judge Joe Brown said is so important about, you know, um, our images that we're, see that we're seeing. So people who are promoting um, uh, good images of Black folks doing things and pushing us forward need to be supported, it's like Hoppy, okay? So this is, that is like the perfect commercial, Judge Joe Brown, for why people need to come out and see our film because it's made by Black people. Black people are in it. We're talking about specific ways black folks can become economic champions in this world right now through cooperative economics, through us loving each other, through, through um, you know, through a host of things. And so this is why it's so important. We keep beating this drum like, come on, guys, you know, everyone went out to go Black Panther. We need for you guys to get on the happy bandwagon so we can get this word out. Black um, Panther was a poisonous movie. And by the way, quit this love bit about economics. Economics is ruthless and cutthroat. It's got nothing to do with love. It's just you need to have a guiding purpose in the back of your mind. And we can't get economics in isolation. No humans on this planet have ever done that, at least not since somewhere deep into the last ice age, 25 to 50,000 years ago. Humans have always tried to branch out and deal with intercourse, community, communications, exchange of ideas, goods, and trade with other groups of humans. And we can't get it by isolating. Plus, if we isolated ourselves, where the hell do we get the army to defend the territory, which nobody's going to give us, and we don't have the means nor the inclination to take it? Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, God, you just, you just touch. Okay. All right. Let's talk about there's so much to talk about reparations. So what is your opinion about? We had reparations. General William Tecumseh Sherman, commander of a certain war district in the South, January 14th, 1865, issued an order that upon application, every black former slave family was to be given 40 acres of confiscated Johnny Reb land and one army mule. His superior, General Ulysses Sherman Grant, approved it. President Abraham Lincoln signed an executive order authorizing it. The Republican House and the Republican Senate put money into it, and it was working. Lincoln got assassinated, and a poisonous Democrat, Johnson from Tennessee that Lincoln had brought in as his president to help set up reconciliation. That low-down scumbag bastard vetoed it because the South still hadn't been reconciled with the Union. 
and he could do that as commander in chief of the military district and the military. So he vetoed it after it'd been in effect for six or seven months and it had been working well and nothing else came back. Now, possibility, but in order to get it, no president can sign anything. It's chunk change. If some state wants to come up with it, that's just bullshit flaws. And to get it, you need an, impro an Appropriations and Enablement Act passed by Congress. Congress has two chambers, the Senate and the House of Representatives. Since we're on that, let me clear something up. The Constitution of the United States does not say that black people are three-fifths of a human. That was a little something that Stokely Carmichael and H. Rap Brown used to say. I think Stokely got it from H. Bap when H. Rap was becoming ascendant. But what Article One of the Constitution says is that every 10 years there shall be a census, the purpose of which is to apportion representation in the House of Representatives. Further, the U.S. shall have a Congress which shall consist of two chambers, a Senate and a House of Representatives. For purposes of apportionment based on the census, three-fifths of those held in involuntary servitude or slavery shall be counted. Okay. That was what you see identically in this last bullshit census they did. I have participated as an adult in five censuses. This is the first one where I was not asked whether I was I a citizen. Why? They want to get all these illegals in, not so they can falsely register them to vote, but so they can be counted. So California wouldn't lose to people from the House of Representatives and New York wouldn't, and Illinois wouldn't, maybe they'd gain some, but once they got counted, see, they couldn't vote, so they wouldn't be able to participate in the selection of the persons that were supposed to be representing them in the House. And see, there's a lot of stuck on stupid with that. Uh, whether you like Trump or not, that first round of impeachment had two articles. Uh, obstructing Congress and abusing his authority. Well, Article 2, Section 4 of the Constitution says the president or vice president can be impeached and removed from office. The 12th Amendment says if they are, or one of them is, he can't hold office again. That's why they went to round two. But on round one, obstructing Congress, what the bozos forgot is they keep thinking of themselves as congressmen, but that was a creation by the newspapers in the late 19th century. See, Congress has two chambers, the House and the Senate. Mm -hmm. So when the House sent the bill over saying that Trump obstructed Congress, the other half of Congress, the Senate, they said, did he obstruct you? Me? Anybody? No. Well, that one's out. Okay. And the other part of that article says you can impeach the president or the vice president for not obstructing, that's not a grounds, but for bribery, treason, or number three, high crimes and misdemeanors in office. So they didn't specify any misdemeanor or felony in office because obstructing Congress and abusing authority are not federal crimes or anybody else's crimes. He didn't commit bribery and he didn't commit treason. So that shit was dead on arrival. It was just a bunch of stuck on stupid jackasses in mainstream media that hated Trump vehemently because he was anti-LGBTQ. Now, I'm not anti-gay folk. I'm anti that sick cult LGBTQ backed up by BLM by Antifa. See, a lot of gay folk think LGBTQ is a cult too. It is. It's like saying all black folk are Democrats or all black folk are Baptist. They aren't. Yeah. You see, 
uh, there weren't any black folk following that sick son of a bitch, Jim Jones, when they drank the Kool-Aid. There were a lot of black folk. See, it's all how you follow the propaganda. Now, on that propaganda bit, I heard them 55 years ago swearing up and down they were going to take over the news media, the entertainment media. They were going to insinuate themselves into sports, and the way they were going to do it is they were going to deal with those who were curious involved in those things. So when they tried it to see if they liked it, they were forever subject to being extorted and blackmailed because they don't want to come out the closet. Mm. Mm. That's what's wrong with politics. Too many of the people at the top, Republicans and Democrats, been doing the 6B routine with each other or the uh, kneel and part. You know what the 6Bs are? No. <laughs> I don't know Unbelt, what those Unbelt, drop britches, drop boxes, bend over, spread butt cheeks, get banged. Uh, and that's called 6B? Yeah, B, belt, britches, boxes, bend, <laughs> butt cheeks, bang. Damn. Okay, that's, that's some new. Okay. Wow. Uh, I invented that. But <laughs> oh, yeah. anyway, I, I used to do this stuff years ago. I'm just resurrecting it from the 50s. Yo, you know, you're going to have We're going to be up here talking about, oh, that's 6B. That's 6B. It's 6Bs, right? The 6Bs. Oh, I like that. That's a good way. You know, that's a good way. Unbelt, to drop britches, drop boxes, bend, spread butt cheeks, get banged. Damn. That's so why I, these kids are so funny and it's tragic walking around sagged and bagged with the pants hung down below their ass. First time I saw that literally was in July 1980. One of my law partners had died and I inherited some of his cases and I had to do a late appeal. I'm up at a penitentiary in Nashville. The air conditioning had broken down in the attorney client visitation room. So I'm sitting out on the yard. It's a hundred degrees. We're sitting under a shade tree where they let us sit. Sitting. I've got a yellow pad talking to this fiend that I was glad was in jail because I knew women and children that did not need to be exposed to him. But anyway, that's another story. So I'm sitting there talking to him, and I look up and I see, what the hell is that, man? Say, oh, Lord, you brown man, you mean dude with his pants down like that? Say, look, man, most of us up in here doing life a long time, man. We got everything we need except some soft booties. So what we doing, man, we making us some man pussy. So we making them dress like that. So like, see them trees over there? When the guards ain't around, we just catch them, bend them down, pull them down, and get down. And if you try to run, they fall down to his ankles. He fall on his face, booty up in the air, which is where we want it. When he on the cell block, we don't let him wear them pants and no panties. So that baggy shirt, that his dress. So we just fuck him all the time. We girling him out. See, he going to be like them's over there wearing them dresses with them wigs on their head. And Jamal already got his baby sister in a care package with some lipstick, mascara, eyeshadow, uh, artificial nails, and some shit. We girl and this motherfucker up. We already done made him some jewelry off in metal shop. A few years later, Criss Cross was doing a thing on, uh, was it BET or something? Yeah, it's probably. Uh, yeah, and I looked and they had down sag trying to be cool. I said, man, look just like man pussy on the mate. Then about the 1990s, that became symbolic for somebody that was private booty for somebody powerful behind the wall. Okay. Be careful uh, what you emulate. And remember. Yeah. The Nazis came into power. You know what the you know what Nazi stands for? No. National German Socialist Workers Party. They came into power. They took political power in 1933, 1933 to 1939. That's just six years. They got into the heads of the German people. Well, the American propaganda machine that the Nazis based theirs on. You know that. Most people don't know that. Mm -hmm. they've had more than 50 years, not six, but 50. The Nazis just got created in 1920. 
That's 19 years between then and World War II. And they didn't take power until 1933. So, I mean, all that time, these people have been putting that poison in everybody's head, glorifying dysfunction. See, one of the things they came up with before the 60s were out. Unisex child rearing. Boys need to learn to emote, to cry, to shout, to let it all hang out instead of being uptight and under self-control, analytical, critical, et cetera, et cetera. Already we're doing the long hair thing, flower power. It's all about love, no war toys, no cap guns, no water pistols. Let the boys play with dolls and poison by this Dr. Spock who doesn't know shit about raising kids, but you had a generation of young mothers who wanted to do the right thing so they could be ideal mothers and they listened to a goddamn folk where you don't punish a child. Unconditional love, damn that shit. There ain't no such thing as unconditional love. Little son of a bitch act too goddamn stupid. If you can't correct it, you start cutting that shit off because he'll be a little monster when he grows up, a big one. You earn what you get. Sorry for me being profane, but I'm getting old. I ain't trying to find a job. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. You use every single word. Although I am running for mayor of Memphis in 2023, and they got oh. a jerk face who already declared he's black, but he has some explaining to do. He started this foundation to do work with parks. So they wanted to take down the Johnny Reb statues of Dathan Bedford Forrest, the guy that founded the Klan, and formerly the biggest slave trader in the South, and Jeff Davis, the president of the Confederacy. Well, they had a park on Union Avenue where Nathan Bedford was, the statue, and one on the bluff overlooking the river and both areas of prime real estate. So he and another little Pop-Tart, who's a lesbian, she says, and uh, she and he introduced a little private act to sell the properties to the so-called charity that he had the exclusive control over. There was no bid. So he bought each lot for $2,500. Hell, I would have written a check on the spot for four times that much. Now, developers want to buy each lot for $10 million a piece. Wow. So why does the city get the money snatched away? And the one, Tammy Sawyer, uh, and the guy that wants to run for mayor is named Van Turner. Tammy Sawyer's got it hooked up so her half-brother, who pays reportedly $96 a month for a storage facility, gets paid by the city and county government $5,000 a month to store Nathan and Jeff. Wow. That's wrong. Yeah. The Justice Department under Bush, Obama Tang, and Trump came in and said the voting machines have been corrupted since 2000. They seem to have forgotten that and said there hasn't been a fair election since the year 2000. It was so bad that in 2008, the feds put up the money to replace every single machine, in spite wow. of the fact that the county commission is majority black Democrats. They refuse to pass that resolution and keep turning it down every year. So now they're talking about getting some new machines. Finally, after they used a corrupt one for the presidential cycle that California published a little pamphlet on how to hack. All you need is a cell phone and the encryption number, which is out there. Hell, I published it a time or two myself. <laughs> so you draft the text using the numbers to a third party. You leave it on your cell phone. You walk in when you get within five feet of the voting machine before you put your card in the machine. You press send. Now you own that machine permanently. You own every machine in the precinct in 10 minutes and every machine in the whole county system in 45 minutes to an hour. Oh so you can call God. the election. 
And then what they do is they uh, sneak in extra candidate numbers in the machines. Each candidate has a number. You're looking at a name, but inside the machine internally to the programming, the candidate has a number. So there'll be two candidates for an office and five candidate numbers. So one candidate will win, but there's 64,000 votes going to three non-existent candidates. That's what that that's called differential vote counting. And these clowns act like it doesn't happen. So uh, they want that. But now the city council finally, since some of us have embarrassed them, we're talking about, yeah, they want to get new machines. But now the hang up is people don't want there to be a paper trail. What, what do you mean they don't want a paper trail? In other words, a receipt system for who voted. Oh. So you can audit how many people actually came in here and voted. Oh. Wow. So you're going to run for mayor. You said 2023 20, 20, or 2022? 20, 2023 20, in Memphis, that's Shelby County, Tennessee. See, this ought to be the new chicago not like it's clowning around now it's completely out of control uh back to what i said in chicago yeah they got a lot of guns in chicago but the wrong people have them and the people that are the wrong ones with them aren't giving them up anytime soon and that jackass mayor lightfoot up there uh after well she went and gave a lot of money directly not to responsible community organizations, but to some Hispanic street gangs. So they bought up a bunch of guns that got stolen and uncar from unguarded uh, boxcars. And I see uh, Illinois Central Rail Yard up there and the guns got bought up and now they got a hell of a mess going on. So black gang, street gangs, and brown ones are shooting each other up and killing children, and they don't have any masculinity and don't know what to do with them. See, public peace, dignity, and order is the responsibility of the pol not the police, it's the people. In fact, recent U.S. Supreme Court case declared they have no obligation to protect you unless they happen to be present. All they can do is detect, solve the crime after it's over, after the chalk outline's been drawn around your dead body. It's up to the people. And see, I'm a well-regulated uh, militia. Well, hell, under English common law, militia was every able-bodied male between 15 and 60 in a community and he had an obligation to enforce order and come to the protection of that community. So maybe what we need is some more less restrict, well, less restrictive gun carry law. So the citizens can take it upon themselves to impose order. Yeah. I was going to ask you, like, what do we do? We well, see, like I told you yesterday, the police are a new invention. When the constitution was written, police hadn't been invented. That was in 1840 in Scotland, England. What okay. we had was the sheriff and he went out and deputized his fellow county citizens when there was a need. That posse comitatus thing. Maybe need to get back to it. And the community police itself. One of my programs is to, instead of having the ineffective police review boards that are civilian hell have a civilian director who is not civil service subject to the whim of the mayor having a civil service chief in each department uniform patrol property crimes you know burglaries bunco homicide each of them has a police sub chief and a civilian subdirector. So it's like the Pentagon. You have the civilian Secretary of Defense, you've got the civilian Secretary of the Army, Navy, Air Force, etc. So, and you have civilian people who are involved in the management of these things. We need that kind of thing so we can get an effective control system. 
Mm. Mm. Okay. You got problems with energy. You got the Mississippi River running through Memphis. And nobody start to put hydroelectric generators down in that flow. The Mississippi isn't going anywhere for the next few million years. <laughs> put some baffles up so no giant catfish get swept up in there and you've got unlimited clean energy. You've got, this is the center of distribution for the United States and where it's a center of distribution, it can be a center of manufacturing a center of management. You've got the Mississippi River runs to the Atlantic Ocean and you've got barge traffic in Europe that gets loaded on ocean going barge transports brought to New Orleans, floated up the Mississippi to Memphis, unloaded at President's Island where the world's largest barge loan loading facility is. So it can get in distribution and these idiots here don't want that commerce coming in. They cut it off and don't understand it. This could be the largest city in America by the end of this century. But nobody thinks. And folk are running around here talking about minimum wage when they ought to be talking about a journeyman's wage of 73.19 an hour, or 81.14 an hour, some big wages, 96.17 an hour. But they don't think. Yeah, you know, I, I was just sitting here thinking, I was like, wow, that's a really good way, especially like this whole idea of global warming. Like this seems a very, like you said, clean and efficient way, um, you know, to uh, make things happen. That's, that's. Um, They're too uh, accused to black, white folk been doing it for years. See, when they had white supremacy, they was taking bribes and everything. Now it's our turn to get the gravy. No, that's not your turn, you damn fool. I want your ass in jail. And I'm going to see to it that you serve some jail time for that crooked crap. Just mm. because somebody else did it doesn't mean you should. Do the right thing. See? I mean, but... Yeah. Another thing, too, that's had impacted black politicians. Too many of them have skeletons in their closets. They're not even criminal. A whole lot of black male politicians have a lot of outside babies that the courts and systems that are responsible for establishing paternity and uh, child support, they know about them. We had one guy who was a prominent elected official, black hero type. When we wound up getting the records, he had 14 outside kids. What kind of leeway does he have? One of them had 25. Another somebody that's a big time around here, this dude had 51 outside kids and a whole bunch at home. Wow. So what kind of leeway politically do you have if you have that kind of background situation? They tell you when to jump and they let you go out and talk uh, bad about white folks so you have credibility but you don't do shit meanwhile look at the colored caucus aka the black congressional caucus these negroes haven't done a damn thing in years yeah it could uh, do something about introducing legislation to change some of the putrid federal criminal laws that we have that allow U.S. attorneys, district uh, circuit or district U.S. attorneys, uh, unlimited discretion not to prosecute, but to persecute, bring somebody in and put them through the ringer, knowing that they can't get a conviction, but just so they can bankrupt the person and make them harmless. Hmm. Wow. People were complaining about, look what they've done to R. Kelly. I said, well, you supported the jackass in chief in the White House, who along with Stennis and Thurman back in 1977, got what he's getting jacked around with passed. And then again in 1981 uh, and in 87 and then in 91 and all you've heard about is 94. Mm. Yeah. 
Um, you know, I was going to uh, ask you, um, because, you know, you, uh, you know, you're giving, a, you're giving us a lot of um, information, a lot of wisdom. And what do you think um, about, well, first of all, okay, um, we had Dr. Julian Malvo on our show and uh, we were talking about it. We had heard Camille um, Yarbrough and uh, Dr. Tareen Wright. And, the, and I posed this question about, um, you know, like the, uh, the responsibility of an elder, right? And so, you know, Dr. Melville stopped me and she was like, you know, not old people are elders. So like, what's your definition of an elder? A wise, ex <laughs> a wise and experienced person. Mm -hmm. Somebody said this about me, said you're a wise judge, you're wise and experienced in law and the ways of the world. And you have yeah. good judgment and you've seen a lot. So you have discernment. Yes. Yes. Also, yeah. I ain't no punk. I've, I've, I've done some stuff that I, I might leave in a book to be published posthumously, <laughs> but it was for a good cause. Back <laughs> in the sixties, we weren't nice to get what we wanted. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And that Panther Party BSU stuff that went on in the neighborhoods, communities, and some of the college, that wasn't all nice and we waving signs. Hell with that. Some mm. folk got jacked up. A lot of folk got killed too. Yeah. See, that's the other thing. We all need to be uh, unified. No, not yet. There are some no good, low down scumbag scoundrels we need to get rid of who are pimping us. Mm. They need to be exposed before we can unify. Because if you don't, you will make the mistake we made in the 60s. And this is an important thing. If you don't weed these folk out and expose them, you will find that organizations that had a chance cannot do what they had a chance to do because there are more people in those organizations who are snitches, informants, undercover, et cetera, et cetera, or trying to take you down because they got paid or they're getting benefits or they're trying to keep out of jail. God, that's so true. That's so true. Um, Know, how are ways you know it just i mean you know you're you're laying out like where we are right now and you know so i'm just trying to figure out like what what is it can can we do um one thing let's start off with home training and basics the girls need some charm school and they don't need to get it from slut ass cardi b who's bragging about being a prostitute and drugging her tricks and robbing them we don't need it from fat ass hippo lizzo who's running around like a harlot half naked at least and she ain't even cute enough to even you know grin about getting the peep at it that's enough to wipe out your appetite but mm. you see we need to stop that and we need to start getting people to behave uh it's like if you go to a restaurant you got your mother your wife a date or something some clowns on the other side of the parking lot yelling at the top of his lungs to some homie about some babe he laid last night or cussing and hollering and carrying on up in the restaurant. See, you don't need that kind of stuff. You know, or like I, I was in this one place and it's gone down. It was closed now. And I just said, I don't want to be waited on by that waitress. Uh, she was awful couple of brothers in there and one white guy in there and another sister they were great waitresses i won't let that one but i said i sit over by the bar i'm sitting over by the bar this big sister came in there with her friend girl they sat down and got my girl i kicked that motherfucker's ass honey that fuck ass motherfucking nigga you know blah 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 excuse me for saying that i hate that that's fighting words and you know mm -hmm. that's all she did for an hour and i turned around and said what is wrong with you? Mm. Said, have you no sense? You get in here and all these people looking at you like a zoo spectacle. 
And no wonder there is no respect for us. And there is disdain and we don't even like ourselves. It's like, yay, yeah, man, see all the righteous brothers in the penitentiary. No, some of those righteous brothers need to have their ass up under a goddamn penitentiary because mm. they ripped off, robbed, shot, killed, poisoned their neighbors. Yeah. And they don't take care of their property. They tear their neighborhoods up. They have to share their music from four damn blocks away. And they have got ideation that came to them as a result of the poisonous propaganda that Hollywood et all have been giving to them for the last 50 years. Yeah. Man up and act with some dignity. Respect the women. And women act like you got some respect for yourself. And look how you look. I was in an airport two weeks ago. I went to L.A. and back. And I'm looking at women with these gray tights on and so much fat and flab. They look like sausages. Like, why well, put on a dress and walking around with bad looking feet and these one strap slide shower shoes with fur on them? What the hell is that? You got all this color in your hair. None of it matches your clothes. Got green, purple, orange, and brown and shit on. I mean, where you get this? And the dude's just as bad. They're trying to look like the hip hop thug, you know? And that's like a flag. Come fuck with me. <laughs> Mm. 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 You know, this is casual. But when you got it on, you blend in. You're in the war, you got on camouflage. So nobody can say, there's one, shoot him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, See, there was a thing one time, it's been a long time ago, 25 some years ago. Some young lady said, Judge, why do all the men in here from the waiter to the guest of honor have on the same thing? I said, it's a uniform <laughs> that's matched to the occasion. And you stand out by your deeds because you are wearing the man uniform for the occasion. So let you be known by your deeds, but it's a matter of uniformity and it is what is appropriate. Well, how come nobody, I said, this isn't a girl thing. Mm. Like and now the girls abandon it. I remember my mother's generation. They'd walk out of a place if there was another woman in there with the same purse, same shoes, or something <laughs> else on. Now all of you walk around with Louis Vuitton purses, which you can buy over in Morocco for five dollars and ninety-five cents if you don't get the zipper. Go buy you some zippers <laughs> for the ten ninety-five and get your shoe repair man to sew the zippers in when you get back to the U.S. and you saved yourself a couple of grand. <laughs> but it ain't well, nothing but plastic. And it all looks the same. Wait, how do you know that, Judge Brown? How do you know that about the bags? How do you know that? I have some friends that used to buy them and bring them back <laughs> for their friend, lady friends. Yeah. You know, there's so many um, black owned um, uh, le leather smith people who make like beautiful bags. I don't even know why we're even buying Louis Vuitton bags. Because we don't have the distribution and black women are like any other women. They want to be fashionable. But we can be fashionable in black owned products. Like there's not. If there's so the black owned product is available, if you can find it and it matches what you think you want. But remember, a lot of us don't. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. The other thing, we spend too much time praying to the preacher pimps in the pulpit. Not all of them, but too many of them. And giving tithing, I tithe 25%. You should do like the Catholics do. Poor Hispanics go in and put one penny in and everybody 
puts their money together. And in 10 years, they got some grocery stores, gas stations, tire uh, supply places and stuff like that. And they're making money. We still running around praying to Jesus. Mm. And mm. We even pray differently. White folks say, Lord, I have done your works. I have spread your word and I have done things for you. Uh, give me strength, Lord, so I can go forth and do what I need to do in your name. Amen. Lord, please, Lord, you know I want this so bad. Lord, please let me have this. Lord, you know I've been praying powerful hard. Lord, you know I prayed two and a half hours all day yesterday. Lord, please, I'm going to play another hour and a half today. Lord, goddamn, get up off your trifling behind and go do it. Yeah. Learn how to read. Stick your nose in the magic book so you can abracadabra. <laughs> Stick your nose in the magic book. Okay. Let me just take That's a called the textbook that you're supposed yeah. to be getting your nose into at some point not too long after kindergarten all the way through the 12th grade. You get that together, your life will find that all of the rest of the doors are unlocked. The door may be closed and you might have to kick a few of them in, but they mm -hmm. won't be locked. Yeah. No, absolutely. You know, it's so funny that a lot of these um, new schools and stuff, they don't even have textbooks anymore. It's worksheets. I know. Things, it's pathetic. You know, yeah, I'm like, that's, that's whack. One important difference. Don't want to cut you off before I forget this. There, men and women are not equal. They're of equal value. They're different. How many times have you told your boyfriend, why don't you just ask somebody how to get there instead of driving around trying to find it? <laughs> You've done that, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we've said, what the hell? We've been in here for two goddamn hours. Just pick out three dozen tiles and buy the damn things. <laughs> that last one is a product of women being hunter uh, gatherers. And you pick the best berries and vegetables and fruit and stuff so you could fix what we ate. We are hunters and we are explorers. We had to go hunt out the game trails with nobody there to, to tell us where to look and find them so we could get the protein we needed or find the pathway through the pass we discovered into the next valley. See, men have a drive to explore which means when there is a map situation, you've got to drive to go find it because before they invented maps, when you were out there in the wilderness with your mm. stone headed spear, you know, in your club with a stone on the top and some stuff that wanted to eat you for lunch or dinner or a late night snack, mm. you had to have that drive to keep your nose to the ground and find that pass to the next valley. See, that's yeah. why we have these differences. Yeah. And see, yeah. that's one of the reasons we have such a problem with COVID-19 is 50 some years ago, they started trying to destroy the respect that was paid to medical science and science generally because they had some jackasses who wanted to push this poison about fluid gender. See, the population that is involved is about four and a half to five percent of the national population. About that corresponding number of doctors and medical researchers will buy into that fluid gender. But they had to discredit the rest of the people so they would have the propaganda material to convince people that all of these doctors agree that there's fluid gender. They don't. But you yeah. see, that's part of what they do because it's propaganda. Yeah. You know what? I think one of the most important things, if you, you guys listen, if you guys don't get anything, I think that one thing we need to um, realize is that propaganda exists. It's been played on us a lot and that we need to um, we need to recognize that and start really, um, you know, looking at things in a real way and not just going along with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got to. 
Um, and just, you know, just a little break. Um, so everybody, please like and share this video. And I want to thank, um, you know, I saw um, a couple of um, cash apps coming through. Um, I saw Ed, thank you. Um, and one other person, I'll, I'll get it in, in one moment. Um, but thank you guys for contributing um, to the happy movement. You know, we are, the happy movement is based on economics, politics, and culture. You need those three things to, to be able to, you know, move uh, people forward. Um, and so it's really important um, that you guys, you know, share this video so we can get, so people can, you know, get this information. We have to get it out. It can't just stay with us tonight and we like it. We say, oh, good job, Judge Joe Brown. Good job, Felicia. And then we don't do anything else with it. We got to keep passing out the information. Um, please like and share the video. Please follow us. Make sure you're following us so that you can get this information, you know, um, uh, you know, firsthand. Um, and also, you know, there's many ways that you can contribute to the Happy Movement. We have Cash App, which is, um, you know, dollar sign. I'm sorry, dollar sign Happy Film. And uh, you can go to our our website we have lots of merchandise i have on one of our t-shirts today look at that yes um yay and we have our dvd you can get a copy of hoppy there's a lot of ways for you to contribute all of our money we 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 turn we it's like a circle we put it right back into our community almost everything that we uh that people that work with us are all black owned um you know and i mean, I mean that have black owned entities and so we are showing the way and we hope that everyone else will as well. Um, so, By the way, on politics, don't get off in that trick bag of saying, I'm not into politics. Yeah, that's a you trick. You're a human. <laughs> that means you're a primate. And if you want to see politics, yes. next time you go to the local zoo, in fact, make a trip to the zoo just for this purpose. Go to the primate house and watch the chimpanzees and the mm -hmm. baboons and you will see some of our primate relatives engaged in some intense politics and Absolutely. quit giving your vote away it should be a bargain become an independent the goddamn democrats were founded to expand slavery in the early part of the 19th century the republicans that we love to hate used to be our party and they were founded in the 18th 1851 for the purpose of ending slavery the roles kind of got reversed but we don't belong to either in other words what are you doing for me and what have you done for me lately and don't just go on somebody's promises because most of the promises you get they can't deliver like presidents talking about they're going to cut taxes they can't taxation is something that comes out of Congress. It comes out of the House. So how can the president reduce taxes if he doesn't have the constitutional authority to do a damn thing about it? Yeah. Yeah. Learn these things. By the way, get yourself a copy of the Constitution. Highlight it, underline it. For the average high school graduate, it'll take about 15 minutes to go through the whole Constitution. It's about 10 to 15 pages, depending upon the side of the pamphlet. Most of it doesn't apply because a lot of it was set up just as an administrative thing in the first decade of the 19th century. It was no longer in effect because government was set up. The amendments, they take a little bit longer, but 15 minutes. That's all it's going to take. It's like it takes you longer to go through the the rules that you have to read in that pamphlet to pass the written test to get your driver's license. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's about doing your research. So, you know, you, you, you get it firsthand and you're not waiting for someone to give it to you. You know, and speaking of, of the White House, what do you like? Who do you, um, okay, so I know that you're not really feeling the people that are there now, okay? Oh, hell no. They're some of the most incompetent dingbat jackasses that have been in there in a long time. Yeah. God, you said in a long time. So, like, what would be some ideal candidates, you know? We don't for, have any. 
Damn, did I not want? I thought Colin Powell would make a good president. Mm -hmm. There's another general retired. He probably would too. General Clark. Oh, okay. I thought Bernie Sanders would make a good president. Everybody was talking about he's a socialist, but for most of the Democratic Party's existence in the last hundred years, they've been about socialism. So it's really a moot point. It's just frou-frou. And we don't have anybody out there. We've got people that have paid too many damn games, and the problem right now is the game plan most of them have played won't work because these days things are too transparent. Mm. Mm. And one other thing I'd put to about that, it used to be that before your word got out in public, you got vetted. And then once the vetting occurred, you got a larger audience. Now any ding bad fool can get out there and get heard through social media. Yeah. The crazier and the more ignorant, the more widespread. Yeah. The other thing is, is we have to do something about contriving to bring an action so we can get Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, YouTube, etc into federal court and get them declared to be public utilities. I know they're private, but so are most of the utility companies in America. They started off that way, but in the 19th century, because of the vital public function they serve, they were declared public utilities. Plus, social media they have to use the airways, and the airways don't belong to them. They belong to the people of the United States of America, and they have to be licensed. And in order to exercise the license and the franchise that they have accordingly, they need to be held as public utilities. Now, there was this case about three and a half years ago. They took Trump in because he was blocking people who were bad mouthing him on his Twitter site. Mm -hmm. A federal appellate court said he had to allow them to continue because they were exercising their First Amendment rights. Well, fortunately, he didn't appeal it past that point. Somebody told him to let it slide. He did, but that stands as the precedent. Mm. It, that's really a good idea. That's a good idea. You don't like what? Trump. You don't like anybody. Fine. But there is this thing about, I don't agree with what you're saying, but I'll defend your right to say it. Because you see, when you do it to one person, you set the precedent for doing it to another and somebody will do it to your side. Later. Yeah. Yeah. Because American politics is cyclic. It's a cycle. Yeah. 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 Um, wow. Uh, well, you know what, Judge Brown, uh, you've been um, so gracious. <laughs> this is why you, 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 you've been very gracious sitting here entertaining all my questions. I just got two more. OK. Um, yeah, two. <laughs> um, so what's like like what are you doing now? Like what like what are you up to right now? I'm that continuing my education. Really? What are you studying? Everything. Oh, okay. Science, medicine, astrophysics. I had a physics major in college for a while. Wow. Also had a minor in vertebrate paleontology. I had a minor in military science. Wound up one minor becoming the major political science, which is why I wound up in law. I never wanted to be a damn lawyer, but I didn't particularly want to have a... Anyway, it is what it is. <laughs> you know, just, you know, I, um, and, and just, you know... Played I'm football, a... too, for a while, but I wasn't going to be pro, so why waste my time red-shirting? Played at UCLA for a while, but you know, 
I got in a few games, but you know, I wasn't going to be any star, so why bother? So you turned to those, well, you were always, you were always in the books, right? Yes. Okay. I was fascinated. All of this knowledge and information, and yeah. I just crave it. I mean, I stay up to three, four, five in the morning sometimes reading. Wow. Yeah. Um, I think reading is a lost art. <laughs> I tell you, everybody um, wants YouTube where you listen to somebody for an hour and a half and what he tells you that's of an import you could have read in five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? All the stuff that you're saying, and I hope everyone is sharing and liking this video because you need to go back and just break it down because you you were referring to so many like uh, historical events, you know, that we need to research on our own and find out. Um, so that we can fully understand what's going on. Like, that's the thing, you know, um, it's the, you know, we have to do the historical research, but the other piece, I really like what you said is about just us standing up and taking, you know, taking our power back. Like that's, you know. You that's know, you have to develop the attitude. Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, Mm -hmm. I fear no evil because I'm the baddest motherfucker in the valley. <laughs> I like that I word. Went, one of the reasons I went to L.A. was to look into my barbecue sauce prospects. Yes, Didn't do too much on sauce. that. But one of my good brothers, uh, best friend, best man at my last wedding years ago uh, for 55 years, Grandmaster, Guru, Sensei, Pendecker, Dr. Clifford Stewart. We had a memorial service. The funeral was months ago. That makes it easier where everybody can tell lies and appreciate what they've experienced. And there was a group of young men from 25 to at least 75. And these were some of the baddest humans you could imagine. These were special ops, contractors, MI6 types, CIA types, SWAT team types. And I started taking martial arts from my brother Cliff 55 years ago. And I taught him to shoot 55 years ago because my old man taught me to shoot when I was six or seven. And I've done a lot of it. And we're in there talking about this. How absurd it is for people to be talking about handguns uh, need to be banned and ARs need to be banned. That's armor like weapons, not assault rifle. That's not what it stands for. Mm -hmm. And we said, Everybody standing around here, even you judge, right? we saw your shit, said every one of us can kill another, the average, another average human being inside of 15 to 20 seconds with no weapon. But all of us talk to children and talk to all these groups and we protect people. What you were saying, I heard you judge the other day. Uh, on YouTube, you were talking about it's a character thing. It's not the weaponry, it's what's inside your head. We all are about protecting people. And these other clowns don't even like themselves, let alone anybody else. So that's why they're dangerous, not the weapon. And I had related a story about Cliff. We were all out someplace and all of us had handgun carry permits out of California. But Cliff's a nice guy. He looks like me. He's just a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, he was. He's gone now. And uh, had an operation and oxygen had a problem. The flow had some oh, complications. No. But aside from that, some fool, three of them wanted to mess with him. And so me and another guy said, no, man, uh, ain't going to happen. 
What man, big dude can't handle himself? Oh, he can handle himself. <laughs> Y'all strap, yeah. Why he can't handle himself? Cause he's strapped too. But you'd be better off if we shot you. You might survive. Cause if he did his thing without a weapon, you're dead. And we don't mm -hmm. want him to go to jail. We like him. We don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know what, uh, everyone, you should uh, research Clifford Stewart. When I was talking to Judge Joe Brown about him and I started, um, I just did, I just, I started with just a, a, a simple Google search. And I was like, this man is amazing. Like he's, um, he yeah. is amazing. Someone really needs to tell his story. See, those are like stories. And we're going to. He's okay, a college good. professor. He graduated from UCLA in theater and motion picture production, summa cum laude. He graduated from Cal State LA at the same time in mm -hmm. geology and petroleum production, magna cum laude. He was PhD. He was a licensed chiropractor in the state of California, specialized, specializing in acupuncture. He was a black belt in jujitsu, black belt in judo. He had 14 black belts in various types of karates. He was 10th Dan in nine of them. He had his own discipline called Within Arms Reach, known as war. Hell, he had five members of SEAL Team 6 that took out Bin Laden that had been his students. So CIA would come down and consult with him. He did work for British MI6, French intelligence, Mossad for the Israelis. He was the bodyguard for the personal bodyguard, a random assistant for the head of Saudi counterintelligence who did a lot of work for the U.S. in the Middle East. And he was a Ph.D. and a former college professor. He was Superman. He was also a Pindeka in an Indonesian martial art known as Pinat Silat. And the only way you can become a Pindeka is for the Indonesian government to declare you that. So when he died, he was one of three Pindekas in the whole world. The man was Superman and James Bond all rolled into one professor yeah. and a damn good guy who I used to work for before he worked for me 30 years later. He ran Trinity Avenue Elementary School's playground in LA. And we had two graduates that a lot of people know about. One was the late former singer, Barry White, who was a skinny little 13 year old on the playground we ran. And the other one was the last person executed on California's death row, I think, Tookie Williams, who started the Crips. His problem, we couldn't get his mother to let him go when we were trying to get him out of the swamp. So he couldn't, so he just became the baddest alligator in the swamp. Mm. He wrote six children's books, and he should have had his sentence commuted to life by the governor, but that didn't happen. But he was writing about what we tried to teach him. Wow. Wow, that's dope. We knew um, a lot of stuff at that playground. We sold hot dogs, drinks. We got it all free. We bamboozled, persuaded, or whatever it was, folk to donate it. We even got a short-range radio station going in there. I was the DJ. Bobby, yo, daddy, yo, this is JoJo coming to you on your radio. He to the two, baby, come fly with me. Today, as we go into the ionosphere, have no fear. Cause I am here, I walk about the land, I give no slack as I go into my act. Get down, Brown is in town. Notice that there is space between the soles of my feet and the planet Earth because I float, I don't tread. I have come as promised and prophesied. Touch me so that your senses can verify that they are not deceiving you. I am men manifest in the flesh put your favorite body part close to your radio so it can feel better courtesy of jojo what how do you still remember that oh my god that's <laughs> what's up let me tell you look you dj and my Marty dad Mar fucked the right woman for my mama and she got the right man to fuck her and the same thing with her mom and dad and his mom and dad 
Oh God. Oh God. Um That's yeah, what it's about. <laughs> um Oh God, you make me lose my train of thought up here, uh, Judge O'Brown. Okay, the barbecue sauce. This is right here, guys. This is, go to this this place right here, JJBBQ, JJBBQ.com. Because you have JJBBQ.com. Yes, that is right there. If you guys want to get, I didn't even know you had um, barbecue sauce, but you're like the perfect person to have some barbecue sauce. So right there, you guys can get it. And, and if you also, want to sample the stuff real in your Los Angeles, it's on seven corner of 79th and uh, Western at the original takeout grill. Doesn't even say barbecue. Oh, see, I need, I need to, <clears throat> I'm telling you, I like LA. Last time I was there, I mean, I like the water. It was just nice. I was down in the hood. Yeah. So I need to come check that out. That sounds yep. delicious. <laughs> um, and also, you, if um, you know, uh, listeners, if you want to follow, uh, which I suggest you follow, um, Judge Joe Brown on Twitter. Let me get this. There you go. It's Judge Joe Brown. TV. That is. Yep. Follow him, even though they are not giving him the the blue, you know, uh, like that little blue sticker, or whatever it is. This is his real. This is his real Twitter. So. You know, you can hear all types of good stuff. Um, yeah, see- they keep shadow blocking me. I'll jump up to X number of followers, and then they'll chop it down, and then jump right back, and they'll chop it down. I had somebody do an audit about six, seven months ago. I did a kid who gave the kids some money to go through an audit. You know, they tell you by name who's following you. And he got up to close to 300,000, but they claimed at the time I only had 30,000. Now I'm hmm. somewhere close to 60, but they keep knocking it down when it gets there. They just don't want me to have an audience because what I say does not match the propaganda. No, it does and not. It's, a, it's directly against the propaganda. Everything that you have said to us is against the propaganda. And I could understand if I was that type of person, why I would not want you to talk to anybody. <laughs> I don't have a problem with folk getting their freak on in the bedroom. That's your own damn business. But when you start trying to kick in my front door and come in my living room, fuck with my children, grand, well, they're grown, grandchildren, whatever, and my friends, and start trying to punk out the country, that's another problem. Yeah. Yeah. That's another problem. That's that LGBTQ cult. See, they're political. They are in the politics. They lobby. You know, mm-hmm. they parade. They demonstrate. That's political. That means they're live. And a big round fuck you. We don't need a bunch of children lining up on a parade route and seeing some dudes with their dicks and butts hanging out playing Ooh. freak. We don't need freaks acting like they're girls reading to children in elementary school. Yep. I think they're trying to exploit them and recruit them. Anyway. I've got yeah. something I've got to do. I'm out of time. So there's another show I got to do for somebody. It's recorded. It won't be going live. But anyway, <clears throat> I'm, I've got to go. This has been Judge Joe. Catch me the next time. I didn't yes. mean to, I don't mean to run. And it has been fun. But there's some things I got to do. So I will soon see you. There it is. All right. Thank you, Judge Rowan. You coming back to Happy Talks. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. All right. (laughs) Bye-bye. Yo, yo, Judge Joe Brown. My, my, my. I cannot wait to rewatch this. (laughs) He's fabulous. Um, Okay, guys. um, A couple of quick things. One, we are going to, uh, because something's going on with StreamYard today, so we you can't really get on to um, like, they just have a lot of technical issues. All right. So I, we were not able to share a, vi- a, a clip of Dr. Patricia Newton, the late Dr. Patricia Newton. Um, 
we want to share a clip of a, um, a poem that she wrote called I Wonder. So we are going to, I guess, re-release the video of the happy talks that she did with us. And, you know, Dr. Patricia Newton is also in Hoppy. She's a cast member. Um, and she was instrumental. And I, I, I mean, she really, she really believed in what we were doing and, um, and showed it with all the, 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 she would make phone calls to people. She would really just help us out a lot. Um, but um, <clears throat> so we're gonna re-release that video and I want you guys to make sure you watch it, but it's very, just watch it all the way through because at the end she recites this poem called I Wonder and that, and she wrote it, it is dope.com. Okay, so please look out for that. We're gonna do it sometime this weekend. Um, it it is is fabulous. Um, also, um, I want to um, just remind everybody: if you have not seen Hoppy, okay, if you're not going to be one of our cities, which is Atlanta, uh, Philadelphia, Washington D.C., Houston, um, or uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut, please go to HoppyFilm.com and get your, uh, you know, you can buy the video or you can get the digital download. Also, while you're there, sign up for the newsletter. I'm telling you, this newsletter is dope. We have Omawale Africa. He writes an article. We have Ellison Nidra, who does, um, and Black Silt. They are writing these really nice health articles. Um, <clears throat> we, we also, I mean, yeah, we always um, will... Um, feature an economic innovator, someone who has laid the path financially for us to be where we are right now. We have some happy news in there. And then we will always, always, always showcase a black owned business. And sometimes it's, it's like a few, it just depends, you know, what, what we're doing that month. But that's, uh, you know, very important that you guys support the newsletter because the newsletter is for you. You know, that's another way that we can get our information and create the correct propaganda if that's what we want to call it, but getting, you know, what we have, um, you know, to give to each one of us so that we can move financially to the next level. All right. So go to happyfilm.com. You can get gear like the gear I have on, um, and you know, merchandise, sign up for the newsletter. And you can also donate if you would like to donate, um, on there as well. If, if you, um, if you like cash app, you know, we like cash app too. You can go to our cash app, um, which I'm trying, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find right now. Our cash app is dollar sign happy film. You can show some cash app love right there. Um, I want to just give a, another special shout out to, uh, I saw King Simon in the house, DM, um, Becky from Detroit, uh, Becky Brown. Yes. She was in the house. She came to, um, to see the film, which was great. Again, thank you, Detroit, um, Cheryl Rogers, uh, Ryan. Uh, series B, uh, love, um, L love my fro, um, DM. I always, I keep just saying DM. Su um, pseudo charlatan. You know, it was just nice seeing, um, you know, see, nice seeing you guys in the house every night when we get on here. That's what's up. All right. If you have not, um, if you're not following us, I don't know why you guys not following us. You guys need to be following us. I know a lot of you guys just kind of like go through and see what we're doing and look at our stuff, but don't follow us. Just follow us. It's like free. You just have to hit the button. And then when you're on YouTube, just go ahead and um, hit that little, um, the little bell so you can be notified. That's important to be notified when, when stuff come up. We get a couple of emails and people are like, you know, we don't know when Happy Talks is happening. It's because you have to hit that little notifications um, button. That's super duper uh, important. So tonight there is a short little video I'm gonna show um, of uh, uh, Dr. Newton. It was a project that we were gonna be working on with her. It's just a, a little piece of it. Um, so please enjoy. And I will see you guys next time. And oh, yes, yes, yes. Next week we have Dr. Bayina Bello on with us, which is, she's the new presenter at the One Africa Conference, which will be in Aswan, uh, Egypt. If you, you know, if you just want to just look and see what the itinerary looks like, just head over to aquettours.com right there. $300 guarantees your seat. And when I, you know, before I, I know I'm always like, oh, we have limited seating. No, we really do have limited seating and we're, you know, we want everyone who wants to come 
um, to be able to uh, to make it. So it's right there. I kept Taurus. Thank you, Sirius B. She puts it in the chat for you guys so that you can just um, see it right. You know, you just push a button and go right there. We have Infodishi and uh, Juhuti Miss, which he will also be a tour guide on the um, on the tour. But he's also going to be a presenter along with Anthony Browder, uh, Dr. Rosalind and Dr. Leonard Jeffries, Dr. Solange Ashby, Dr. Wade Nobles, Asar Imhotep, uh, which I think he's probably the youngest one um, on there. And um, I believe that's it uh, so far. So it's so important. And oh, oh my, my number one man, Professor James Small. Uh, so it's very important that if you guys are even thinking about like, oh, I think I may want to do it right now, go to Akhet Tours and put down your $300 deposit. And you have until uh, January 18th to get the rest of the money together. You do not at this particular time, um, I know somebody was asking about a vaccine shot. You, you do not need the vaccine right now. Um, you just have to test uh, negative for COVID 96 hours before you go. And then um, to come back to the United States or wherever you're actually going, you have to take another COVID test to come back. So please, please, please. And I want to thank Cheryl Rogers for your cash app love. That's what's up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. And so I think, I think that is it. So I'm going to close with um, some words from uh, Dr. Newton. Watch out for the video that we're going to uh, re-release. Please watch it. It's great. You got to hear her saying her own poem because that's dope. Okay. All right. That's it. You guys have a beautiful time and peace and blessings. Lust is a temporary insanity. It's not, it's not going to necessarily take you from one place to the next. It will make you feel good, but it won't make you feel good for long. And so having that dialogue, having that communication, having that mutual respect, because people need to have some congruency in terms of where they're going, where they see their future, and what their ideals are for child rearing. And to failure to do that early in relationships, I'm not saying to jump every relationship and think that you're gonna marry that person. I'm not saying that. I am saying though that when you get someone that you see a lot of compatibility with, that you really do like, it's time to start having those kinds of conversations with or without the context of marriage, but with the concept that this is somebody that I could possibly spend a lot of time with, maybe a life with. what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community?